This program is brought to you by Emory University. I'd say, you know, Iron Man is good science fiction in, in one sense. To me, good science fiction takes stuff that can exist maybe in the near future or the more distant future and builds a story around it. It doesn't make stuff, um, stuff necessarily out of whole cloth, but takes stuff that is already kind of bubbling along and pushes it along further. So the idea of an Iron Man suit actually is a little bit in the works. There's plenty of money that the U.S. military has put in to build things called exoskeletons, which is just a powered framework that you fit your body into that gives you um, enhanced endurance or speed or mobility or strength. And the military has developed these things. I've seen pictures of soldiers strapped into a fairly large steel framework that lets them move faster and with more agility than they would normally. So that can happen. It'll be a while. It'll certainly be a long while before you have a suit that covers you head to toe, has complete sensors, and best of all, lets you fly. I think maybe that's the hardest thing to do. But a walking kind of Iron Man that is stronger than the average soldier, I think clearly can happen. In fact, I've gone further. Uh, the military is putting money into seeing if there are ways to make a person connect to a weapon so that there's direct neural control. So that can be in the cards. And in fact, as a side to that, which is really a very serious side, an important side, uh, a lot of soldiers injured in Iraq and Afghanistan don't have torso injuries because they wear body armor, but they have limb injuries. So the military has actually devoted a, million bu a billion bucks, I'm sorry, to making artificial arms that are not only mechanically integrated, but neurally integrated. So you might someday end up with a suit that makes you smarter, is under your direct mental control, lets you do amazing things. Flying, I think, is may maybe the hardest thing to think about. That I wouldn't bet money on, but other things I would bet money on. Now, what you need for all of this is a power source. And the power source that Tony Stark develops in the movies is called a uh, arc reactor. An arc just means a, a huge electrical spark. And a reactor is anything that will let you combine two different materials and make a new compound. There are things called arc reactors, but what they do is not very exciting. For instance, there's a patent out for an arc, re arc reactor which will let you combine nitrogen with oxygen to make nitrogen compounds. And that's great. It's useful for agriculture and so on. It is not what Tony Stark made. As far as I can judge from the film, what Tony Stark, what the film means by an arc reactor is it's a fusion reactor. This is this idea of making energy by smashing together two hydrogen nuclei and uh, turning them into helium. That's what goes on in our sun. It's a great power source. Physicists have worked on this idea for 60 years. They haven't made it work yet. The machines that would generate this are the size of a building. They're huge things. What the movie implies is that Tony Stark has made something that will do that same amazing smashing together of hydrogen nuclei into something two or three inches across that fits in his heart. Uh, they actually quote the power level that it puts out, and I was really intrigued, so I worked it out. The devices he makes are putting out anywhere between 1 and 16 million horsepower. If you're a, a, a sports car fan, a million horsepower is the equivalent of two or 3,000 Corvettes. So imagine that amount of energy coming out of something three inches across. Now, nothing you can ever make in the way machinery is ever 100% efficient. Even the waste energy from that, just the waste heat, would be enough to leave Tony sorry he had ever put it into his body. So the physics part of that doesn't really work out in detail, but it builds in this idea of a fusion reactor, a fusion machine, and that's great. There are people working on this right now. And we might actually have one of them in the next 10, 15, 20 years. It'll never be this small. It'll still be something at least 30, 40, or 50 feet high. But it's, to me, it's an example of science that is not in the realm of totally out to lunch, totally ridiculous. It's an extension of a known idea. So I think the film does, does a good idea, uh, m makes good use of, of that notion. My idea of a lot of science fiction films is um, it's nice if, if you want to give yourself flexibility, start with one big suspension of disbelief. And in this one, the suspension is I can take a machine that hasn't been invented yet, and if, it's 50, if you do invent it, it'll be 50 feet high, boil it down to something the size of a hockey puck. Once you allow that, then Iron Man suit can do just anything. Millions of horsepower is enough to punch through walls, to fly, to do whatever on earth you need to.
So it's consistent once you put in the power source. And I think the film really works at that level. The preceding program is copyrighted by Emory University.